Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Today, I'm sharing with you a warning in case you're having any attic insulation work done at your home. The most important part of an attic insulation job is to have air sealing performed first. So let's dig right into this. What the heck is air sealing? Another term for performing air sealing is to seal the attic bypasses. An attic bypass is any passageway for warm, conditioned household air to leak up into the attic space. Attic bypasses are a huge driver behind ice dams, frost in the attic, and all other kinds of attic moisture problems like condensation on the roof boards. It's extremely important that if you're having attic insulation added, you have the attic bypasses sealed first. Any qualified, competent, trustworthy insulation contractor will be talking to you about this and quoting this out as part of their job before they do it if you live in Minnesota. In fact, it's so important that it's actually part of the Minnesota Residential Energy Code. If we turn to section 1322.100 of the Administration for Residential Energy in Minnesota, you'll find a section that says attic insulation shall not be installed unless accessible attic bypasses have been sealed. So let's take a look at some of these attic bypasses so you have a better understanding of exactly what I'm talking about. This first example shows an attic bypass around a furnace vent. There's a big passageway where there's air leaking all the way up the vent up into the attic space. That's going to be a very warm area. This next photo shows a small example of an attic bypass around a plumbing vent. Here's yet another example of a plumbing vent. This is a very small bypass, but still there's going to be a lot of air leaking up around that over time. This next example shows yet another furnace vent with a big bypass up to the attic space. Notice how all the insulation around it is stained black. That's not mold you're looking at. It's fiberglass insulation, so it acts like an air filter. And years and years of air passing through the fiberglass insulation has turned it black. Here's another example. We're seeing a bunch of wires passing through the top plate of a wall, and all of the bore holes for those wires need to be sealed off. Here's yet another example of that. We had to dig through a lot of insulation to find this, but we use infrared cameras during our home inspections, which makes it really easy to find these attic bypasses. Here's yet another one where you had new construction meeting old construction in a remodel, and the space between the two had a big gap. Okay, big gap is relative. That was really a small gap. This one shows a big gap. There was a piece of fiberglass batting laid over the top of this chaseway for the furnace vent, and you could see right down into the walls. And finally, here's an example of an attic air leak at a new construction home. We did this before they had added the insulation, and you could see where the top plate of the walls meet, they didn't seal off that opening. This will allow for a lot of air to leak up into the attic space. In most of these cases, the way to fix this is to get an insulation contractor to come out pull all of the insulation away from the offending areas, seal off those areas either with caulk or more commonly, your contractor would use spray foam insulation to make a perfect air seal. They'd seal off all of these attic bypasses and then they'd put more insulation down on top of it. If you're a homeowner thinking about doing this type of work on your own, sealing your own attic bypasses, my advice would be don't do it. Insulation contractors are very good at doing this. They do it day in and day out. They know exactly where to look for all these attic bypasses, and it's nasty work. You're crawling around in an attic, you're squatting, you're ducking, you're hitting your head on nails coming through the roof sheathing. Just ask me how I know. I've done it many times as a home inspector. It's not fun work. My advice would be to pay a professional to get this done the right way. And then the last thing I want to mention is that every once in a while, I'll hear people say that you don't want to add too much insulation. And to that, I say hogwash. There's no such thing as too much insulation in an attic. I mean, maybe if you go nuts and you do something bad, like blocking the soffit vents, you don't want to block your soffit vents. You need airflow coming into the attic space. 
that would be a bad thing. But otherwise, there's really no such thing as too much insulation. But on the other hand, there's also a law of diminishing returns for attic insulation. And once you've got the first few inches down, your returns on that additional investment in insulation continue to go down and down. So I, I don't suggest going absolutely nuts with your insulation either. If you have something close to what's required for your area, you're probably good enough. You're probably not gonna get any type of return by hiring somebody to come out and add just a few inches of insulation. It's not going to be worth it. And side note, here in Minnesota, the minimum insulation value is R49. How many inches of insulation does that translate to? It depends on what type of insulation you have in your attic. Thank you so much for watching and be sure that you do your homework when you're hiring an insulation contractor. Take care.